Hello and welcome to chapter two. We're going to go through the PowerPoints. Normally you would have a note package, but because chapter two is all theory, um, you really have to just read it to get an understanding. Um, otherwise I might as well just read the text to you. So I think probably the best thing is for us to go through these slides. I'm, I'll kind of talk about some examples, maybe some highlight some important things. The main thing is don't try and memorize the concepts in this um, chapter. It's all about the conceptual framework that governs our reporting standards. So you just have to understand the concepts and be able to explain them in your own words. So explain in your own words. or use them in the way uh, we do in the exercises from the text. Okay, so let's get started. On the second slide, bear with me, I have two Labrador dogs and if they drink water or run through the house or play fight, you might hear them in the background but I'll try and uh, keep them down to dull roar. Okay, slide two is just an outline of what you want to make sure you can cover. And same with slide three. So slides two and three, you can just look at, they're a nice checklist to see if you understand um, a conceptual framework and what it is. So I want you to focus on slide four for right now. And this is an actual visual of conceptual framework. So the conceptual framework really underlies our counting standards. And you can think of it as this little triangle. It's a good way to um, memorize it. Now, Remember, um, in the introduction video, I said the exams are going to be open book. So you don't have to memorize, oh, what are the qualitative characteristics? You can have it open to this page if there was a question like that and look at them yourself. But um, remember that you don't have time to read them over and then try and figure them out during the exam. So as you go through this chapter, Make sure you can maybe not memorize the list of all the pieces, but you can define each one for memory for the exam. So the very top, we're going to work through all the way to the bottom through the next few slides, is the objectives um, <coughs> of accounting standards. Then you've got qualitative characteristics and the elements. And then at the bottom is all the foundational principles. So that's what we're looking at uh, this chapter. <coughs> so on slide five, there was a new framework <coughs> put out by the International Accounting Standards Boards. And I'll just write that down because you may have forgotten it. International Accounting Standards Board, and they do IFRS, which you may remember from last year is for public companies that trade stock exchanges, and ASPE is for non-public companies, so accounting standards for private entities. <clears throat> so it's going to talk about the objective of general purpose financial reporting, our whole little triangle, so the elements, the qualitative characteristics, recognition, derecognition, and measurement, presentation and disclosure, and so on. Now, the conceptual framework is subsidiary and doesn't override specific IFRSs. 
<coughs> so if something in an IFRS says do this, it takes precedence over the conceptual frame. And I'll mention stuff like that as we go through. Okay, on slide six then. And remember you guys, you can always pause this to read the slide and then go on, uh, whatever you need to do. Uh, you've got all of the video. So the overall objective of financial reporting, and that's up here, here's our objective, is to communicate information. It's got to be useful to users and useful in making decisions on how to allocate resources. So, <coughs> resource allocation decisions, sorry, I've got a frog in my throat, are assumed to include assessment of management steward, that is how management is using the entity's resources to create and sustain value. Management stewardship <coughs> is a big deal <coughs> for shareholders and investors to think about. And just in case you're unsure, general purpose financial statements are the basic statements that give information that meets the needs of key users. So now we're going to move down to the qualitative characteristics on slide 7. Two fundamental qualitative characteristics, relevance and representational faithfulness. So relevance means it's relevant or applies to decision making. So it will make a difference in decision making. Has predictive feedback, feedback, sorry, predictive and feedback value. So what that means, it can help you predict into the future and you can test it and it'll give you feedback. So you, you think based on your assessment of a company, sales are going to increase 2%. You use the information you have to put and then the next year you can confirm it, whether it happened or not. <coughs> so that's what it means by relevant. So materiality. Um, think of a large uh, billion dollar company. And you buy a stapler. How long is that stapler going to last? Let's say, I don't know how much a stapler is, $30. Well, it's probably going to last a long time. Some of these staplers last like 15 years. So, does that mean you should record that stapler as an asset and then amortize it over the years? So, a stapler is it an asset that's amortized or should we expense it? Well, in a billion dollar company, what do you think? Does it matter which way we do it? <coughs> no. So you'd probably expense it for a billion dollar company. Okay? So, what materiality means is it's a measure of whether or not the information is going to make a difference to the decision maker. Okay, so um, you will talk a lot of the materiality calculations you will actually do in your audit class if you go on and take auditing. But it looks both at just numbers but also qualitative factors. For example, let's say the CFO of a billion dollar company stole a thousand dollars from the company. Is $1,000 a very big number? No, not really. But the fact that it was your CFO and that it was fraud would override the smallness of the number. And I'm just using broad examples here. But hopefully you get the idea. Okay, so <coughs> first fundamental characteristic is relevance and it includes these things. The second one is representational faithfulness. 
And that's things like economic substance over legal form. So that's what's actually happening. So you might have a contract that says it's not a lease, but what's actually happening is a lease. So you would record it this way, okay? And that's something you'll learn in 316, intermediate two. Uh, transparency, it's got to rec represent economic reality. So for example, you bought a building for $10 million, you'll have some kind of contract for that. That's transparency. Completeness, you've included all pertinent information. Um, neutrality, information does not favor one interested party over another. So if you have some kind of exchange between two companies, The way you present it on the financial statements cannot favor either one over the other. And as you go through both 315 and 316, you will start seeing the grayness, it's not so black and white anymore, between relevance and representational faithfulness when we're doing transactions. Okay, we want neutrality in standard setting, so um, we don't want to um, focus on any, let's say, special interests. So we want it to be as neutral as possible and hopefully freedom from error. Now, you'll notice the more you get into accounting, especially intermediate, you'll notice there's going to be S and judgment you have to use because it's not um, a hundred percent clear. Okay, so that was the second fundamental qualitative characteristic of representational faithfulness. So all accounting information should be both relevant and representationally faithful. So one note, now that we've gone through slides, the stuff I write down, you don't have to write down. You can if you want, okay? Um, but also remember, I'm also talking about concepts and I might not write it all down. So um, I would encourage you to write down what you think would be helpful for you. So, uh, to ensure information has relevance and representational faithfulness, you just have to follow these three steps and we'll be talking about these as we go through the course. Um, one thing is the cost benefit we have to look at and make sure that the benefit we're getting out of it outweighs the cost. So benefit is greater than the cost. Again, unless the standard overrides us and says we have to do that. Okay, my recordings have a little limit here, so about every 14 minutes, I stop and then we'll continue with the next one.